Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So it's really cold right now in Alice. You don't feel like working on the car, but I'm going to work on it because the project isn't going to finish itself. It's going to need some work and then, you know, I'm going to slowly progress on it. Probably not going to have so much content as, you know, uh, it does take a long time to do the rust repair for me at least um, because, you know, I work on it here and there. Um, passenger side actually took weeks to complete um, and you guys probably just finished watching the series on me fixing the passenger side and now it's finally ready for paint and primer. But we're going to repeat that whole process again and do it on the driver's side. So let's just get to work. So here's the rust situation on the driver's side. It's much better than the passenger side, but it'll require just as much work. So let's start by marking off the area that I'll be cutting out. I got this nice silver sharpie to make things easier to see. Time to center punch all the spot welds so that I could drill them out later. And now it's time to start cutting out that rust. Drilling out those spot welds that I marked earlier. So here I'm just using some tin snips to cut out the loose metal bit by bit. It's easier to manage that way. Check out all that loose rust. Look at that pile of rust on the floor. It's crazy how much loose rust there is. I'm glad I'm wearing a respirator. And there goes that last piece of the rocker panel. Time to wire brush that rust to see what we're dealing with in the inner wheel arch. Time to cut out the back piece of the inner wheel arch. Here's the rust situation in the inner wheel arch. There's a lot of rust to clean off, but it's much better than the passenger side was. At least the inner wheel arch is all mostly intact.
So I lost the footage of cutting the inner wheel arch, but I basically cut out the bottom part so that I can gain access to clean out all the rust inside there. I start by grinding down all those spot welds. Time to wire wheel and remove that rust. I decided to use my shop vac to vacuum while I removed the rust to reduce the amount of rust particles in the air. As well, I also wanted to suck up any of the pieces of wire to fly off the wire brushes. Those things really hurt. Now let's work on the quarter panel rust. The one thing that this side had that the passenger side didn't. So here's how it looks like with the rust mechanically removed using wire brushes. I've also removed the tar stuff that was behind the rocker panel and the undercoating in the wheel well using a heat gun and a flathead screwdriver. Time to start fabbing up the replacement metal. I traced the template for cutting out the piece I need for the wheel well. I created a seam with my seamer tool so that I could tuck it in there so that I could butt weld it to the rest of the body later. Time to make the rear piece for the inner wheel arch. I made a cardboard template and traced it onto some sheet metal. Now to cut out that template. Now we can start bending and shaping the piece. I'm going to also drill the hole for where the rubber plug goes.
Now it's time to fabricate the piece to seal back up the bottom of the inner wheel arch. Here's a look at the finished pieces. Now it's time to chemically remove the rust to get rid of any of the remaining rust. I applied a generous amount of rust remover. Here's a look at the area after the rust remover has been applied. I have to wait a while for it to work its magic before I wash it off with water. Now let's scrub off the rust remover. I use a toothbrush and a sponge to try and remove the rust remover the best I can. Now it's time to blow the area dry with some compressed air. After this point, I let it dry overnight, then repeated the chemical removal process all over again just to have the chemical remove as much rust as possible. It's time to prepare the fabbed up pieces by painting them with some weld through primer and get them ready for when I have to weld them. I'm also giving the rocker area a quick wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to paint the exposed surface rusted areas with POR15 so that it is further protected from corrosion. I completely forgot about the POR15 when I did the passenger side, but I did paint that side using some spray rust paint um, or with some weld through primer. I guess the driver's side will be better protected. I'm just rolling my POR15 to have it mixed up before I pour it out. Here's a trick on how to keep your POR15 for a very long time without it drying out. Drill two holes on the top corners of the lid one hole is to pour the POR15 and the other is just to make pouring faster. By not actually opening the lid, you keep the POR15 from drying out. I sealed those two drilled holes with some screws and put it in a Ziploc bag so that it keeps the air out. So far it's worked well. I've had this can for almost a year and it's still good. Now onto the painting. I did two coats of POR15 as recommended. I'll just grind or sand the painted areas down to bare metal that I'll be welding before I will. Here's how it looks like all painted with POR15. I honestly didn't care that the inside was a different color. Uh, this is a sealed area anyways and it really wouldn't be visible to anyone. The only person that knows it's a different color is basically me. Um, the most important part is just keeping it from rusting. Anyways guys, that's all I've got so far. Um, it's been pretty darn cold here so working on the car is taking a lot longer because things just aren't drying as quickly. But the bright side is that I know how to do it now because I've already done it once on the passenger side. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. And if you're new here, please show me some love and subscribe, comment, and like. As always guys, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.